Doug, Ashley, congratulations. Your Karambits have landed you guys into the final round of this competition. Good job. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to make one of these. The cane sword. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. It's day one. I'm back in my shop in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm gonna start working on a rough blade shape. This is gonna be a very thin, very light blade. I don't wanna have excess material that's gonna come back to bite me. I'm gonna start with exactly what I need and work from there. I can't draw it out too thin. I'll end up with weird little weak spots in the middle, and that's catastrophic for a blade. Just clean it off a little bit. Some pretty gnarly scale on it. I'm checking, and then I'm grinding. I don't want to take away any more than I need to. A Little bit more work in the forge tomorrow, a little bit more work on the grinder, and then I'll be good for quench. I'm going to do a little fireball action here to kick this project off. I'm a trained professional. Do not do this at home, ever. Three, two, one. <laughs> Fireball. Let's get this party started. Feels good to be home in my home shop. I'm going to take this piece of 5160 and get it in the fire and get it heated and get it drawn out. A little nervous about it because I only have one piece of this 5160, so it's kind of crucial that I don't screw it up. I'm a Damascus guy. So I'm going to use the Damascus for the pommel and for the burl. There's no way this piece is getting out of here without some Damascus on it. Starting off day two, I've got to do a little bit more touch-up work, and then I should be ready for a quench. All I'm really working on is straightening out any wiggles. I've still got a couple. So I'll just hit and check back and forth. Things aren't really truing up like I'd like. So I decide I need to just go into the quench now. I don't feel any tings. Comes out of the quench, and there is definitely a warp. I feel like I can requench it maybe once. I've got to go in for a second quench. Am I going to scrap this blade? Am I going to start over, or is this going to work? I come out of the quench, skate a file down it, a couple spots towards the handle that are a little softer, but I think we're good to keep moving along. I feel like I could finally a little bit start to breathe. I would have liked to have gotten a little further yesterday, but my quench was very successful. Daddy likey. Woo! And so it's mechanism day. The cane sword is going to require a locking mechanism, so the sword will lock properly in the cane itself. I'm not really tooled up to do stuff like this. This locking mechanism really is a tricky bastard. The brass hook slides into the bolster, which latches it and locks the sword into the cane itself. And that has to hinge because there has to be a spring underneath it that will allow the button to compress down to where it releases the lock. And then the spring will push the hook back up to lock into place in the bolster. Yeah, I got a latch. All I have to do is attach my button to it and tap this in. I'm on my way. I've never made a cane before, so today I want to spend a whole day dedicated to it. I want to make sure that this cane is structurally solid in case they're going to beat on it. So my cane is going to be a framed construction. This bit will be in the middle of two other slabs, kind of like this one. And it'll all be pinned together, as well as a fair bit of epoxy. Beautiful. I'm taking my cane down from being a box to being a hexagonal shape. It's starting to really look like something other than a block of wood. So I've done the texturing on my cane. It's very similar to the flint nap that we did in the round two on the handles of our karambit. All that's left is I want to pop a little linseed oil on all the wood parts, and I mean, I'm done. Last day. First thing I have to do is make a cane. It's a little wobbly and rough, but I think it gives it character. We're going to sand it down really smooth and then uh, oil it. It'll be great. This is my Damascus billet for the pommel. It's carbon steel, so carbon steel doesn't like this. The Damascus pommel has to be tapped uh, so that it'll screw on the uh, bolt that I've welded into the tang of the sword. If I break the tap off in here, that's it. Oh, god. Wish I had another tap. 
There it is. Sure enough, it breaks. Damn it. Failure's not an option, so I'm gonna go to my plan B, which is building one out of a piece of rosewood. It bums me out because the rosewood pommel isn't as pretty as the Damascus one, but I'm just gonna have to settle with the rosewood. It's gonna be a good weapon. There we go. Button's working. It'll definitely hurt somebody. And uh, if you got a bad leg, it'll hold you up. <laughs> Doug, Ashley, welcome back, and welcome to the frozen great outdoors. You guys have had four days at your home forges to work on your cane swords. Doug, how did it go? It proved to be a difficult build for me. I built the blade out of 5160. It's a black walnut cane and handle with a rosewood pommel. The bolsters are Damascus. It was uh, tough. All right, Ashley, how'd it go for you? I kept mine pretty straightforward. I did a 5160 blade, brass pins here and there, and a copper connector to a black and white ebony, little stop at the bottom. All right, Bladesmith, your weapons will now be put through a series of three tests, a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. Doug? All right, Bladesmith, welcome to the kill test. The cane sword, what an elegant way to walk around with a concealed weapon. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your cane sword and deliver kidney slashes and blows on this ballistic dummy. Doug, you're up first, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right. I'm really nervous about today's testing. Anything could go wrong. I'm hoping to do as much damage to the mannequin as possible, uh, but you know, I just, no matter what, I don't want anything to break. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. All right, Doug, let's talk about your cane sword. You have a very sharp edge. This blade thrusts nicely, it cuts nicely, and who knew such a very slim blade could do that much damage? What I love about your handle right here is that curved part right there. It gives me that flair that I like to feel when I'm thrusting or slashing and moving a weapon around. Your weapon, sir? Kill. Thank you very much. All right, Ashley, it's your turn. Are you ready, sir? Absolutely. Let's do this. <sighs> Tough act to follow. This is the kill test, and a cane sword has to kill. If it doesn't, this is the end of the line. All right, Ashley, let's talk about your cane sword here. The cross section shows here that it is kind of coarse, so it could be a heat tempering issue. But worse than that, some of the grinds here are uneven, and this was its thinnest spot. So as you can see, it's a critical failure. Well, Ashley, when we have a tough break on this show, it's literal. You suffered a catastrophic failure and cannot continue in this competition. And for that reason, I'd like to invite you to please leave the range. It's heartbreaking, but I am incredibly proud of the work that I've done. When I get home, the first thing I'm going to do is make another cane sword. I, I got to do it right, at least once. So good. Yes. Doug, congratulations. You are the new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. How do you feel right now? Uh, $10,000 richer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on over here and shake our hands, brother. I did it. I did it. Good job, Doug. It's awesome. This has been one of the best experiences of my life. It took me every emotion possible, anger, uh, joy, to uh, just absolute crying. For anybody out there that wants to do this, my suggestion to you is show up with your A game and uh, get a lot of sleep before you come. 
because you're not going to get any until it's over.